Please be seated. Tēnā koutou katoa, nā mihi ki a rātu kuanaro i te tirahanga kanohi hari koutou hari otiatu. Ki a tātou ti kanohi ora e hui hui nei i raro i te maru a ruahini tararua monga. Tēnā koutou rangatāni ki manawatu, ka nui te mihi ki a koutou. Arira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ki ora ano tātoa katoa. Vice-Chancellor, fellow Massey University Council members, members of the university community, members of the Manawatu Campus Graduation Committee, distinguished guests, graduands and families, I extend a very warm welcome to you all to the spring graduation for 2020, the first of five ceremonies. My name's Alistair Davis, and I'm a member of the Massey University Council, the group responsible for overseeing the university's governance. It is my great pleasure today, on behalf of the Chancellor, to preside over this graduation ceremony and confer qualifications to the successful students of Massey University. For nearly 100 years, Massey has been part of the New Zealand's um, fabric of the economy and the culture. And of course, for our graduates, it continues to be a launch pad into the wider world. We not only help graduates shape their own future, we help to shape the future of New Zealand and the world. At Massey, we try, strive to solve real world problems and thus make a difference in people's lives. Through the combined efforts of our research and teaching, new solutions and discoveries are made to address the challenges that face us all. Graduates of Massey University complete their chosen course of study with more than just mere knowledge. They leave with the capacity and capability and confidence to change the world they live in, to establish new pathways, to lead the way forward, to make life better for those around them. We are immensely proud of the entrepreneurial spirit that our graduates possess. This week, Massey University is bestowing a total of 112 qualifications on 895 students over five ceremonies. In fact, a total of 1,091 students are graduating at these ceremonies or in absentia. At this ceremony, degrees will be conferred and diplomas awarded in the College of Health, the College of Creative Arts, and PACE, which is Professional and Continuing Education. There'll be a total of 154 in person, including six PhDs and a further 54 in absentia. Now, graduations are festive occasions and one of the biggest celebrations of academic success. While today is about you, the graduands, it's also about your friends and your families who have encouraged and supported you in good times and in bad and who are here to acknowledge your success. For those of you with family and friends who are unable to join us in person today, please remember that our, our ceremonies are being streamed live on the Massey University website. Now, as I walked in, they were having difficulty with the streaming, but even if it's not working, rest assured the recording of it will be posted on the website in due course. So feel free to share the link with um, loved ones so that they could be part of this wonderful celebration too. So to those of you who are preparing to accept your parchment, I encourage you as you await your moment on the stage, take a moment to reflect on the events that have led you to this point, the sacrifices and the hardships, the triumphs and successes, the friends made along the way, the people that helped you through, and the experiences that became your student journey at Massey University. And to those of you in the audience, when your loved one takes the stage, don't hold back. Be exuberant, be loud. 
because their few seconds on the stage mean all the more for you being here. So please don't be afraid to contribute to their experience. Now, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that 2020 has indeed been a year like no other. The impact of COVID-19 on the university and to each one of our daily lives this year has been immense. Yet through adversity comes resilience. Through hard times comes strength. The graduates here today uh, many of whom completed their studies under unique conditions, are to be congratulated. Your perseverance, your flexibility, your resilience in completing your qualifications show that you are well prepared for life after study and have the skills to face with confidence the road ahead, no matter what it brings. For the university, the investments we have made to date will serve us well, and the strategic vision of the university remains strong. Massey will, will meet the challenges and disruptions yet to come with confidence, and we will continue to deliver world-class research and teaching for our students and society at large. Now, turning our attention back to today and the celebrations at hand, I am very pleased that the nation's alert levels are such that we're actually able to hold this prestigious event. My thanks to the academic staff and council members seated behind me and the many professional staff who have put in hard work, time and effort into this occasion. Graduation is always a special event for the university. Graduands, by the end of today, you will be part of a Massey alumni family with more than 150,000 people all around the world. I welcome you to this new far now and hope that through the many connections it offers that your careers will be supported and your lives will be enhanced. And I say this because the university cares about you. You are now each part of the Massey University legacy, part of a story that's now written, but part of the chapters that are yet to come. The voice of you, our Tao era, our students, it's a key part of the narrative of this university, and it's important we listen to you and chart our future direction together. You see, university education changes lives. The lives you stand to lead, having achieved the qualifications you're receiving today, will be transformed as a result of the commitments you've shown to earn them. So graduates, congratulations once more. Continue to work hard and take all the opportunity that life gives you. I urge you to stay connected to your, uh, with your alma mater and your university family through the Alumni Association. I know that you'll continue to strive to aim high and succeed in whatever you choose to accomplish in your life. Do us proud. Narira tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Alistair Davis, Acting Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and those in absentia. The Associate Dean for Learning and Teaching for the School of Health and Sciences, Associate Professor Andy Towers, will call the names of the graduands and the recipients of certificates and diplomas in the professional and continuing education uh, College of Creative Arts and College of Health. Pro Vice Chancellor for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Cynthia White will hand out the scrolls for professional and continuing education. And Acting Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Jill McCutcheon from the College of Health will hand out the scrolls for the College of Creative Arts and the College of Health. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the certificate in university preparation the candidates I'm about to name. Tania Julie Johnson. <clears throat> Emma Jean Carroll Lindsay.
Amy Sinnott. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Commercial Music, the graduand I'm about to name. Caleb Te Peirata Kumiroa Tichpum. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Creative Media Production, the graduands I'm about to name. Paris Nicholas Juris Elwood. <laughs> Sena Nicole Filippo. <laughs> Jordan Max Hornblow. Anthony John Mattish. <laughs> Melinda Lee Patterson. <laughs> Grace Brooke Quantock Holmes. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Design with Honours, the graduands I'm about to name. Angela Bianca Dancel Alburo. <laughs> Anna Lee Baines, First Class Honours. <laughs> Jasmine Alicia yuk si Chin. Whitney Grace Hinton, First Class Honours. <laughs> Nadia Mary Jenner, First Class Honours. <laughs> Alfred Zapanta Mendoza. <laughs> Samantha Ray Miller. Lisa Marie Newman, First Class Honours. <laughs> Rick Altos. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts, the graduand I'm about to name. Eilish Kelly Dwyer. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Māori Visual Arts, the graduands I'm about to name. Karina Helen Kidd. <laughs> Pamela Vernon, First Class Honours. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Health Science, the graduands I'm about to name. Melissa Rose Alexander. <laughs> Claudia Jan Bowman. <laughs> Brianna Faith Daly Rutherford. Kipolini Falefoi. <laughs> Libby Jean Keeney. Yes, 
Shreya Rinal Maharaj. <laughs> Henna May McKnight. <laughs> Anahera Mere Mila Otaka. Kate, uh, Anna Kate Newman. <laughs> Kelly Roseanne Van Dyck. <laughs> Jira Viri. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Science, the graduands I'm about to name. Kelsey Ann Ditchfield. <laughs> Talia Caitlin Hopkins. <laughs> si Yun Lee. Desmond Ka Sun Leung. Grace Ashley Nicholas. Eden Mackenzie Power. Daniel Desmond Vasaoka. Amber Kate Wilson. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Nursing, the graduands I'm about to name. Brianna Francis B.T. Richards. <laughs> Dora Edita Nina Bissett. Lex Peter Bruton. <laughs> Megan Claire Burgess. <laughs> Georgia Monica Ann Carroll. <laughs> Nicola Jane Collinson. Neve Peter Ellery. Amanda Marie Franks. Anna Elizabeth Gilmore. Prudence Catherine Glenn. Kendall Marie Gowan. Georgia Rose Graham. Anna Virginia Haynes. Sarah Joy Hunt. Megan Rose Jameson. <laughs> Jessica Rose Jakes. <laughs> Alexandra Carol King. <laughs> Kylie Ann Kirby. Ella Louise Livingston. <laughs> Lily Pearl Mackay. <laughs> Lily 
Mackenzie Nicole Michaela Milne. Sarah Lynn Mobbs. Danisha Siobhan Pawson. Rebecca Emily Robb. Emily Rose Robinson. Joanna Ruth Robinson. Ashley Ann Ryan. Lorna Margaret Ryland. Abigail Jane Shanks. Jonathan Gary Tanner. Stephanie Janine Tarrant. Ella Jane Taylor. Kendall Margaret Thomas. Megan Kate LaRue Westrop. Clara Alva Whittington. Whitting Francis Raywan Barbara Williams. Haley Margaret Wolfenden. Junjo. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. It is now my pleasure to invite Catriona Williams to address the graduates. Catriona Williams has ridden since she was four years old. Her illustrious equestrian career saw her reach the pinnacle of show, the show jumping and three day eventing world. She was twice winner of the New Zealand Pony of the Year and of two and three star national titles. She represented New Zealand at, uh, uh, on the international eventing stage at Badminton and at the Open European Championships, as well as in show jumping, a highlight being the World Cup final in Sweden. Her key target was the 2004 Athens Olympics. After a devastating horse riding accident in November 2002, Catriona suffered a severe spinal cord injury and became a tetraplegic paralyzed from the chest down. Following Catriona's injury, friends and colleagues gathered together with the initial plan to raise funds for her. However, the bigger picture quickly became, became clear. A cure was Catriona's dream, and in 2005, the Catwalk Spinal Cord Injury Trust was founded. Now, since that life-changing initiative, Catriona has completed the New York Marathon. She cycled 1,000 kilometers from Lhasa in Tibet to Kathmandu in Nepal, which included a world first to the Everest base camp on a hand cycle. She was a finalist in the 2014 Kiwi Bank New Zealander of the Year. She was inducted into the New Zealand Horse of the Year show Hall of Fame and was recognized in the 2014 Queen's Birthday Honours List with the New Zealand Order of Merit. 2016 brought a special win in the New Zealand Women of Influence Awards in the Community and Not-for-Profit Division. Catriona's primary goal has never wavered, and that is 
to dance with her husband on her feet again. Intensive gym, tra gym gait training and focused core sessions are enabling her to get closer to this dream while helping her to stay fit and ready for a scientific breakthrough in spinal cord injury research. She does this by continually challenging herself and her friends with physical adventure, as well as supporting the Catwalk Trust with innovative and fun fundraising initiatives. Catriona is married to Sam, and they have a son called Ted, who's a chocolate labradoodle that Catriona has trained to assist her. Together, they run Little Avondale, one of the oldest family-owned thoroughbred studs in New Zealand. Catriona. <clears throat> Acting Chancellor Alistair Davis, uh, graduates, uh, family, friends and colleagues, you rock. You've coached, you've lectured, you've handheld, you've motivated, you've inspired each other to get to this life-changing moment. Stop, inhale, and look around you. You did this, you got here, you helped these people get here. It's time to raise a glass, no, not a glass, it's high five time. <laughs> Excellence is not a skill, it's an attitude. And every day we have a choice. What's our attitude today? On the 10th of the 11th, 2002, my life changed dramatically. <clears throat> was I scared? You bet. I was terrified. I couldn't feel a thing except this sharp, shooting pain in my neck. And I tried very hard not to swear at the very kind but very large first aid ladies who were trying to help me. I knew instantly what I'd done. I'd broken my neck. What I didn't realise is that my life as I knew it would be changed forever. And believe me, this was never going to happen to me. The next two years were hell. Friends would come and visit me in hospital and hold my hand and squeeze it, but I couldn't squeeze back because I didn't have that ability. I'm a tetraplegic, so I'm someone that's broken their neck. A paraplegic is someone that has broken their back. And the easy way to tell is if someone has funny hands, they've broken their neck and can't feel anything from the nipple down. So if somebody walks into the room, you can tell whether they're a tetra or a para pretty much straight away. Someone had to feed me because I couldn't hold the utensils to do it myself. Someone had to move my pillow. You know when you get into bed at night and you just snuggle the pillow just under your neck so it's in the right place? I couldn't even do that. Then I had the obvious issue. I couldn't walk. Ride, run, or dance. Someone had to help me get into the wheelchair because I had no strength to transfer. Someone had to help me shower, go to the bathroom, and of course the list was a mile long of all the things I couldn't do. Dad even had someone say to him, would she be better off dead? He of course jumped down their throats, but quietly at times, there were moments where each of us thought, would I? But I don't think I've mentioned my competitive streak. I hate losing. And you never know how strong you are until being strong is your only option. And I remember being in the Burwood gym one day. Burwood is down in Christchurch, and it's the biggest uh, SCI hospital and rehab centre in Australasia. And I remember being at the end of the gym, and I was trying to transfer from the wheelchair to the bed and back again. I was holding back tears. My chin was on the ground, and I was feeling pretty sorry for myself. I was so pathetic and so feeble. Look at me, look at where I am. <clears throat> and I looked up and there in the distance was this young Māori boy, boy who had wheeled in to the, to the uh, gym. He was a tetra, he had funny hands. He had a Rastafarian, tea cosy kind of hat on his, on, his, on his head with all these dreadlocks. 
and he had a big grin from one side of his face to the other. And I admit, he was hot. <laughs> Not just in his looks, but in his personality. And he radiated this energy. It's hard to explain, but you know, some people, they just, they just have it. And from that day on, I said, that is going to be me. I'd be lying if I said that every day from then on has been good, but I'm an incredibly lucky person. Ironic, I know, coming from the blonde and, the chair, and sitting in the chair on stage here. But they say you make your own luck, and I'm a big believer of that too. People hate being around miserable people. Life's way too short to hang with the knockers. When this happens, I always excuse myself. Might be at a dinner party, a rugby game, or at the Regent with a whole bunch of graduands. So if you get the 360, watch out. Life throws us all challenges, and some we're a little more prepared for than others. And we only need to look at the White Island explosion. Who saw the Sunday program on TV over the weekend? That was pretty moving. And of course, there's COVID. But it's how we deal with these challenges that shape our future. It's our attitude that defines us. And unlike White Island and COVID, we have the ability to control it. 16 years ago, approximately two years post-injury, a few girlfriends, a whole bunch of them, got together and they wanted to raise some money for me. And after we chatted for a bit, I said, you know, the only thing that is going to change my life is to get these legs working again. So our focus became very clear. Research for a cure, then everyone benefits. And that is how the Chat Catwalk charity was born. Catwalk has an incredible team at the helm who are vibrant, passionate, and absolutely dedicated to their work. But they drive the most magic network of people around the world. With international patron, like the Queen's granddaughter, Zara Phillips, that rugby guy, Richie McCaw, it's a tough job, but someone has to do it. I'm the one that often gets the praise, but believe you me, I am merely the front person, and I cannot give enough credit to the team behind the scenes, because these hands and legs, well, let's just say they don't follow orders very well. What I am great at, though, is thinking big, aiming high, and daring to dream. And if there's something I'd love to tell a younger me, it's exactly that. Think big, aim high, and dare to dream. We've been lucky enough to tick off some fantastic challenges in the name of fundraising, like the New York Marathon. And just to put that into context, when I decided that I was going to do the New York Marathon, I was riding my hand cycle up and down our 800 metre driveway, and up and back would take two hours. A marathon is 42 kilometres. Everyone thought I was nuts, which clearly I am. We raised $350,000 out of that first effort. Myself, along with two other teachers, did achieve that world first by cycling to Everest Base Camp, and we raised another $600,000 out of that effort. And we've been involved with many black tie fundraisers. I do love dressing up. And so far, we've raised over $10 million towards spinal cord injury research. And that's to support the very best research we can get our hands on. But the best part about all these projects was doing it with a great team. As our patron, Richie McCaw, once said, it's not getting across the line first that matters, but how many people you take with you when you do. Our plan this year was to cycle through Mongolia, following part of the Genghis Khan route. COVID has not dampened the enthusiasm of the 25 adventurers who are doing it, either by horse, bicycle, or hand cycle. But it will make us appreciate it just so much more when we get to do it. Speaking of luck and teamwork, I'd like to make a special mention of Lynette, Josh, because Josh told me I had to say this. <laughs> Lynette, Josh, Rob, and Adam, my current team here at Massey, who assist me every Wednesday with my gait training on the treadmill. 
They are part of a nine strong team of people in the Manawatu and the Wairapa who spend 10 hours training this body every week to walk again. This was one speaking engagement I could not turn down. Think big, aim high, dare to dream. You bet. My single goal since my accident has never changed. And as Alistair said, it is to dance on my feet with my husband again. Thanks to this nine strong team, don't tell anybody else, but we're getting closer to that goal. Teamwork, sometimes it's a team of nine, sometimes it's a team of two. My husband Sam has been my biggest supporter, my big best friend and my soulmate. He never sees the chair. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not so good. But what it has made me realise is that when you choose a life partner, choose carefully, choose wisely. Because a very good friend, a merchant banker in fact, said to me, Katrina, it has the ability to double your wealth or halve your wealth. Didn't Sam choose well? <laughs> so, with regard to thinking big, aiming high and daring to dream, let's put it into the words of American Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Sorry, I couldn't use any of Trump's, none of them were quite right. <laughs> dream with ambition, lead with conviction, and see yourself in a way others might not see you, simply because they've never seen it before. And we will applaud you every step of the way. Thank you, Catriona, for your inspirational, motivational address. Excellence is not a skill, it's an attitude. And what are the three things? Think big, aim high, dare to dream. So that was kind of a good message, I think, for an occasion such as this, so thank you. We will now continue with the conferment of degrees and the award of university diplomas. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Social Work the graduands I'm about to name. Alexandra Jean Bond, First Class Honours Massey Scholar. <laughs> Nicalia Chetty, Massey Scholar. Maria Helen Collins. Jade Lacey Fraser. Rachel Annette Hampton. Natasha Nancy Huxtable. Sophie Renee Leopard, First Class Honours. <laughs> Jessica Rachel Petrie. <laughs> Katrina Christine Rowland, First Class Honours Massey Scholar. <laughs> Joanne Setefano. Karina Upeguto. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Sport and Exercise, the graduands I'm about to name. Emma Jane Aiken. <laughs> Ruth 
Mitchell Ryan Bialy. Danielle Louise Olive Bolton. Benjamin Bryant. Kelly Carter. Jessica Nancy Elwin. Suloy Ruby Finau. <laughs> Sarah Lee Finlayson El Elena Jean Forlong. <laughs> Kyle John Foster. <laughs> Dylan Patrick Harridge. <laughs> Jamie Lee Hicks Wilton. Boneta Itini Mariwe. Sarah Ann Murphy. Sheldon Pyorangi Matara Evitz. Tiffany May McElain. Kylie Ann McKinney. Holly Jean Morell. Hemaima Makere Rikihana. Cassidy Reha Slade. Caitlin Olivia Sita. Natalia Rose Taylor. Shannon Mary Tikira. Eunice Bethia Wieslang. Yeah. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Environmental Health the candidates I'm about to name Philip John Holdstock, <laughs> Blossom Muriel Colleen Masters. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the Graduate Diploma in Occupational Health and Safety the candidates I'm about to name. Rebecca Ann Bloomfield. <laughs> Colin Andrew Overton. <laughs> Annette Iris Stubblesfield. <laughs> 
Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the postgraduate diploma in nursing the candidates I'm about to name. Lauren Michelle Hamill with distinction. <laughs> Ellen Nicola Iwanita with distinction. <laughs> Snare Prasad. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of a Master of Applied Social Work, the graduands I'm about to name. Dulani Wasana Abisingye, First Class Honours. <laughs> Louisa Jeanette Karangeti Cleverly. Suzanne Patricia Gallagher. Charlotte Mary Hatton. Megan Francis Kernahan. Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Nursing. The graduands I'm about to name. Louise Beatty. <laughs> Mandy Lynette Bevan with distinction. Amanda Marilyn De Hoop with distinction. <laughs> David John Gray. <laughs> Melanie K. Miller. Kelly Francis Rubin. <laughs> Haley Andrea Wells. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Science, the graduand I'm about to name. Kate Ann Stewart. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Social Work, the graduands I'm about to name. Eva, Sandra Eva Bowden, First Class Honours. <laughs> Rihia Fanga, First Class Honours. Acting Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the certificates and diplomas are also awarded to those who are in absentia. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. It is now my pleasure to invite Lex Bruton to make uh, the valedictory address on behalf of the students. Lex began his journey with Massey University after graduating high school in early 2017, first completing his Bachelor of Nursing degree and then gaining his nursing registration approximately a year ago. 
Since then, he's been working for Mid Central District Health Board as a registered nurse, practicing in various mental health and addiction clinical settings. These include acute inpatient mental health and now in a case management role in the board's secondary mental health community service. His job is providing specialist assessments and treatment uh, to people in our community who are experiencing enduring mental health and addiction conditions. Lex was also part of our district's frontline response to COVID-19. During this period, he cared for COVID-19 probable patients and experienced firsthand the pressures that were being faced by health workers worldwide in response to the pandemic. Lex is also engaged in further postgraduate study. He's participating in the nationally recognized new entry to specialist practice program funded by TIPO. This initiative awards funding to selected applicants to complete a specialty postgraduate certificate in mental health and addiction nursing to further develop their practice. Lex. Thank you, Acting Chancellor. First of all, I'd like to say kia ora, no mai, haere mai, welcome to all my fellow graduates and their friends in Fano. We made it. <laughs> Although COVID-19 has caused a few unexpected delays to being able to get here today, we're here, acknowledging the success and merit of hard work, perseverance, dedication, and resilience that led to us all graduating alongside each other. I feel a great sense of pride and respect to have been selected as valedictorian and consider this a privilege to be able to speak to you all today. This ceremony, filled with so much diversity and variation, encourages us all to celebrate, but also brings us together in a way that only we will remember for years to come. Whether you're 21 years old like me, or more experienced in the game we call life, we all share one thing in common. This may simply be the ability to cross this stage, receive our congratulations, and walk these streets, but for some of us like myself, I'd like to think that our connection is so much deeper than that. At one point or another, you've leaned on someone here in this room for support, encouragement, and motivation. This no doubt includes our families, friends, classmates, and of course, Massey University staff, who without their help and guidance, none of us would be here today celebrating this momentous occasion. I'd like to make a special mention to the School of Nursing for giving myself and countless other graduates the tools to succeed in what is an ever-changing healthcare environment that we work in today. Although graduation definitely is a well-deserved time for celebration, I also believe it is a time for reflection. Reflection on the experiences each of us have had during our study, reflection on the connections you've made, and reflection on the learnings that hold true weight and value to you in your future. How have your studies changed you? How have they shaped you to be the person you are right now, today? For me, when I ask myself these questions, one word comes to mind, growth. As a result of my study at Massey University, I feel I have grown into a more mature, intuitive and perceptive person. I regularly use and apply the knowledge, skills and attributes that I developed during my study and I'm sure I'm not the only person in this room who feels that there is so much more to gain from this experience than simply a qualification. We've all made unforgettable memories during our time here some of which we will definitely carry with us, and I know I'll treasure some of these with my closest friends. To wrap things up, look inside yourself. Truly appreciate the time, effort, and hard work that we've all put in to be here today. As the age-old saying goes, nothing worth having ever came easy. Rest assured that after today, you've not only gained a qualification, but a whole new part of yourself. Be proud of who you've become following your studies, and I encourage you to take this experience with you to wherever you might end up in life. And maybe one day, we'll be able to look back on today with a fondness that only time can bring. Namahi nui and thank you.
Thank, thank you, Lex, for your valedictory address. We'll now continue with the conferment of doctoral graduates. Acting Chancellor, a doctorate, either a PhD or a professional named doctorate, is the highest research degree awarded by the university. The successful completion of a doctorate represents a significant achievement. Through the submission of a sustained piece of research uh, expressed in the production of a written thesis of no more than 100,000 words, or a creative work of equivalent size and scope, or, a, um, or via a series of publications, candidates are expected to make an original contribution to knowledge in a specific field of study. Candidates will typically spend three to four years of full-time research solving a problem uh, or addressing a particular set of questions. An international panel of experts then examines the resulting body of work through both written and oral examination. Doctoral research is challenging and represents a huge commitment to advancing research and scholarship. We honour the achievements of our doctoral graduates by inviting them to come up onto the stage at the, uh, at the point of um, uh, graduation, thereby formally welcoming them into the academic and scholarly community and acknowledging their entitlement to be called doctor. Acting Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, the graduands I am about to name. Lokugama, Hegawa, Penchame, Samudra, Damasdasa, Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> Acting Chancellor, Cadmium and arsenic are toxic trace elements and common soil contaminants. Ms. Dama Dasa investigated the impact of exposure to these elements in earthworms and found that some impacts could be reversed. Her results have implications for managing the impact of environmental contaminants. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Dama Dasa. Olaji Lilian Elay Sunmi or Yele Ray. <laughs> Osteoporosis is a disease characterized by low bone mass, which often results in fractures. Mrs. Uh, Elay Sunmi or Yele Ray investigated the relationship between diet, inflammatory status, gut microbiome and bone health in 127 New Zealand postmenopausal women. She found lean body mass and intake of B vitamins were important for bone health and an occurrence of higher inflammatory status amongst the osteoporotic women. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Elise and me, Oyeli Ray. Stacey Michaela Kung, Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> to better understand when mature gait is achieved, Ms. Kung investigated age-related differences in the walk-to-run transition between youth and adults. Her research revealed that children and adults use different strategies to adjust gait and identified rate-limiting factors of gait maturation in youth. These results indicate there is ongoing maturation of gait throughout adolescence. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Kung. <laughs> Jacques Jean Rossio. Military personnel commonly suffer lower limb injuries. Major Rosso demonstrated that boot wear over a period of time leads to the ankle joint becoming unstable and more injury prone. 
His results have radically altered the fundamental thinking about wearing military boots for support and inherent stability. Acting Chancellor, Dr. Rosso. Felicity Jane Rachel Ware. <laughs> Young Māori parents play a significant part in raising the next generation of Indigenous children. Ms Ware examined the historical, cultural, political and social contexts that influence early parenting for Māori. She found that support for young Māori parents is constrained by negative views about being young, early ch childbearing, having a Māori identity and receiving welfare. Acting Chancellor, Dr Ware. Warwick Russell Wood. Sports coaches play a significant role in influencing a range of athletic experiences and outcomes. Mr Wood explored the role of coaches in satisfying high performance athletes basic uh, psychological needs in the team environment. He identified a number of coaching qualities, attitudes and behaviours that were need supporting or need neglecting. Acting Chancellor, Dr Wood. <laughs> Thank you, Acting Chancellor. Would all our graduates please stand? He honore nui te whakatau atu i a koutou, hei raukura o te kuninga ki pūre huroa. It is my great honour to welcome you as alumni of Massey University. The award of a university degree carries many privileges, but like all privileges, it also carries responsibilities. I charge you as graduates of Massey University to use what you have learnt for your own betterment and for the benefit of your communities. I charge you to use the skills and knowledge you have acquired with rigour and integrity and to commit yourselves to a program of lifelong learning and discovery. I charge you to remember the lessons Massey University has taught you about the worth of others, particularly those who've not had the opportunities that you have had. I charge you to set goals and to continue the hard work that has brought you so far. And in all that you do, I charge you to be deserving of the good name of Massey University. Congratulations, please be seated. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. At the conclusion of this ceremony, guests are requested to remain in their seats until the processions have assembled in Broadway Avenue. Please then join our celebratory procession to the square, where we hope you will mix and mingle with your graduates, staff, family and friends, who have all been part of your graduates' successful journey. I declare this congregation to be adjourned Please join with us in singing the national anthem, God Defend you New Zealand, the words of which are printed on the screen. Would you please stand?
Oh, mate. Do you want to start it? Uh, 